Welcome back friends to the shop. I am about to step in or wade through the biggest dung heap known to man because I'm going to broach a topic that has come up time and time again and that is why did you buy a gas engine over a diesel with the new Super Duty F250? Now unlike my past videos I've actually put some effort into this in that I've created a list of 10 reasons why I chose to buy a gas engine instead of a diesel. Now, many of you are going to be offended. Some of you are going to be validated, but none of you are going to get my list until you hit that thumbs up. I've got time. I'm a YouTuber. I've got all day. All right. Got that done? All right. So this, let me preface this. Before I get into this, this is, these are reasons that apply to me. Uh, not necessarily to you. You know, there seems to be this general consensus out there that uh, there's just one reason behind everything and everyone's got to fit into that. I just don't subscribe to that. If you're an excavating contractor, if you're a hotshot, you have very different needs than a guy that's hauling trash or a landscaper, right? So for my particular needs, I'm going to make the argument why the gas engine is the better fit. Now, I've got to preface that, not any gas engine, specifically, the 7.3 liter Godzilla. That is a heck of an engine and I'm going to make the argument why I think it's wiser to buy that for most guys than the 6.7 liter Power Stroke. Number one, cost. Right off the bat, you're going to pay about $10,000 more for the diesel than you are for the gas engine. Now the diesel guy is going to make the argument, well you will recoup that when you resale and that's probably true. But for some people, that's a big deal. You know, the cost of it, the $10,000, you know, when, when every, trucks are expensive and if you can wipe that off right off the top, that might make a big, big difference. You might be able to even go up to a nicer trim package, which you would probably enjoy more than have that stinky rattling diesel for the next 10 years. So cost uh, was number one for me. Number two is hard to find diesel some places. Well, in the States, I spend a lot of time in remote locations. You know, we take the camper, we go dirt biking, we go snow biking. A lot of the smaller stations or the outlying stations don't have diesel. And unless you want to carry a saddle tank in the back, which is another expense and another hassle because now you lose capacity and you can't put a camper in and you can't close the tailgate if you want to put dirt bikes in and on and on and on, that's not a great solution either. So that's something that's really a bummer. Packing extra fuel, packing extra cans, I just don't want to do it. Gasoline, you're going to be able to find that anywhere. Any small station is going to have it. Diesel, not so much. Uh, many, many stations I've been to that do not have diesel, and that's a concern for me, and I don't like that as well. Number three, stinky. <laughs> I don't like the smell of it. I don't like uh, when I have to go to the gas station, um, pump my own gas, you get diesel on your hands. For some reason, there's something about diesel, it just hangs on forever. You just get anywhere near it and you're going to smell it the rest of the day. It oozes, it stinks, it slimes, it gets all over everything. It just has a, uh, an ability uh, to stick around uh, it, it's incredible. Gasoline, I just don't notice that much. It seems to evaporate or go away. I just, I don't like the smell of it. I don't like the stink. I just don't like the, just dealing with it. It's just kind of a pain. That's it. But I'm a West Coast guy. You guys know how we are. We're softer here. Those little things matter to us. Number four is a big one. High repair costs. Goodness, I have I've got friends. I can see, you know, you can see there's, I, you'll see that there's something wrong when their continents has fallen. You'll say, Yo, Jim, what's going on? What's the matter? Well, it's that injector pump. You know, it's going out on me. And you know what those things cost? It's the injector pumps. It's the fuel injectors. It's always something. The repair costs on them are expensive. More batteries, bigger heavy components, bigger starters. Everything is so much more expensive, so much bigger. And just the cost of keeping it going, the cost of those things is can be tremendous. It's, it's, it's something the guy wants to consider. You just ask a guy that's had a diesel for a while and he'll tell you horror stories about fuel injectors and injector pumps and yada, yada, yada. It's just, that's just part of it. Not to mention the extra weight up front. Go talk to your Dodge friends. Ask them how many times they've replaced their ball joints on the front end of their truck. I have 
if I had a dollar for every one of my friends that drug his tired old Dodge into my shop asking for help replacing the ball joints because it wasn't designed properly and that heavy diesel engine, that big Cummins up there, pushing down on there, it wears out brakes. It wears out ball, ball joints. It wears out front ends. It's just a big, heavy thing that just tears stuff up. Brakes as well. Fun fact, there are adapter kits for, the, for our Dodge friends. May God be with you. Uh, to completely convert the whole front end brakes from the knuckles out into Ford Super Duty. Because why? Because Ford Super Duty brakes and axles and all that stuff are better built and they're tougher. There are no conversions for the other way. No one's putting Dodge front running gear and front ends on their Super Duties. I assure you of that. So it goes, the, the expense of maintaining it, it, it is greater. Now, do you get more mileage? Perhaps, perhaps. But I'm just talking about my specific... Uh, situation. Horsepower versus torque. Now in the past, the diesel engines, they always have more torque. It's just got to do with the way that they burn and, and they just, they're better for pulling. But when we're talking about the 7.3 liter Godzilla, I'm going to give you some anecdotal evidence here too, but it's my experience and, and I experienced it and it means something to me. So I'll share it. The 7.3 liter, this engine here has 430 horsepower and 475 foot pounds of torque. That's pretty impressive. Also, it's a traditional engine, meaning it's not overly complicated. I was really happy that Ford kind of went back to the drawing board and went with just a standard cast iron block, which is really good uh, for handling heat. Uh, single cam, push rod engine, just a classic American V8 like we've always had with 430 horsepower and 475 foot-pounds of torque. That's pretty incredible. Here's my anecdotal story. I went down to pick up the mini excavator, what was that, last month or so, with that big heavy 14 foot um, iron bowl trailer. I'm gonna put that trailer on there and I didn't even feel it. I'm like, oh, that's, that's pretty good. Well, I started to head down to, to the guy I bought it from and I had to pull it down a steep grade. Those of you guys who are from Madras will know the grade down into Cove Palisades, it is steep. I don't know the percentage, but I'm guessing somewhere between a combination of five, six percent, maybe even pushing seven percent. That's a steep grade. When I took that trailer down through those windy corners, I was gripping, thinking, my goodness, how, what's going to happen when I put that four-ton excavator in the back of this with this gas truck? Went up the other side, picked it up. I was amazed. The transmission, the 10-speed transmission on these things is so good. When I crawled down off of that hill, I didn't white knuckle at all. Mrs. W was with me. I didn't even touch the brakes. The transmission handled it. The engine braking was absolutely fabulous. I, I literally didn't even touch the brake at a five and 6% grade. The truck just crawled down off there. I was so at ease and so comfortable with it. I just had a nice normal conversation with Mrs. W where in the past I would have been, don't talk to me. I'm trying not to, to kill us, right? So it's a wonderful engine. And crawling up the other side, I was wondering, well, how's it going to handle coming up? Is it going to overheat? Will I have enough power? Am I going to have to have a bunch of cars and traffic behind me? Good grief. At any point in, any point in the, the whole ride, I stepped on the gas. I could accelerate at will. Just an incredible engine for a gas engine. So that right there really solidified the deal for me. It's such a great engine that I just there, there's no need. Even pulling that extreme weight, which was probably a good thousand pounds over my GVW, um, no problem. It handled like a champ. The heat temperature gauge, it didn't even move. Amazing. Simple to work on. Again, going back to what I just said, we've got that traditional single cam push rod engine. Very simple to work on. There's nothing elaborate. There's nothing, you know, that, that most guys can't do. It's You don't have to have special... Uh, uh, knowledge or take it to special diesel mechanics. It's something that if you had a problem that most competent mechanics would be able to work on, you place the starter, those standard things that we do. There's nothing that we're not familiar with. It's just what we grew up with. It's just a simple engine that's going to run for a long time and be reliable. I'll make the argument that this may be the best engine that Ford has ever produced, but we'll see. We'll see. Number seven, Ego. There's a lot of ego that goes into these engines. I'll tell you a story. When I first bought this truck, I took a trip, Jack and I, to Idaho. And one of the young men came up to me when he saw that I'd bought a new truck and berated me immediately. Why in the world did you not buy a diesel? Now, I didn't miss the fact that he didn't even own a truck. <laughs> I think he was riding with 
someone. But that to him was uh, to see a man in a, in a gas truck. Uh, he was less of a man than someone who bought a diesel. He just couldn't even it couldn't even fathom the fact that I would buy a diesel or buy a gas and not a diesel. You know, so if that's important to you, and it could be, I get that. You know, we all uh, we all have our things uh, when it comes to ego, but um, you got to get past that. It doesn't mean anything to me. A guy pulls up in a diesel. A guy pulls up in a gas. It doesn't make any difference to me. I don't. Um, I guess I don't attach his manhood or his masculinity to the engine in his truck. This is a very American thing. I know this is going to be very hard for our European friends to understand, but it is real. Trust me, it is absolutely real. And that's number seven. Get over your ego. Um, both of them are very nice. Uh, number eight, what are you going to do and what is your intended use? I am not an excavating contractor. I am not pulling equipment for a living. I'm not a hot shot. I'm not loading up um, a gooseneck trailer and, and hauling cargo and freight. If I was, then there would be no question. The diesel, the horsepower on the new uh, power stroke, that 6.7, 475 horsepower, 1,050 foot-pounds of torque. That's very impressive. Do I need that? No, I don't need that. Would I like to have it? You bet I'd like to have it, but it just comes at too high of a cost for the mentions or the things that I mentioned before. It's just not worth it to me to, to, to deal with all of that. But again, what are you going to use it for? Number nine, cold weather. Cold weather, diesel doesn't do well in cold weather. Now, if you're in California, moot point, doesn't make any difference. But if you're in Alaska, or if you're in Newfoundland, or if you're in upper the UP, you know, that can be a big deal. You get down into 40 below zero and your diesel gels up. Now you've got an extra burden. You've got to plug the thing in. What if the power's out and you need your truck and the diesel's all gelled up and won't start? You know, that's the type of thing where that's just something that gas engines are typically not going to have to suffer from. Uh, gelling, fuel, and, and that sort of thing. And number 10, I couldn't really think of anything, so I'm just going to go with noise, rattle, and smoke. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the, of the diesel engine, of the rattling noise. My, my granddad used to say when those first diesels came out, I think it was the Power Strokes, um, he was a Ford mechanic. He's like, my goodness, the thing sounds like it's tearing itself apart. You know, you know how those things were. I uh, never really enjoyed that. Uh, the smoke, uh, the noise, uh, the drama that comes along with it. I just don't need it. I, 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 that's just not my thing. I may have liked that when I was younger, but now I detest noisy engines. <laughs> my grand, my life goes full circle, doesn't it? My granddad, he couldn't stand it. Well, first, the worst thing I ever did was bought a Dodge. He was a Ford man, right? Our family actually had, I think, the first dealership in Oklahoma. I'll tell you a quick story. This is a fun one. So back in the day when you had a dealership, there wasn't anyone that hauled cars for you. You wanted to sell Ford cars and Model T's, Model A's back in the day. You uh, had cash in hand and you got on the train or you drove and you took as many family members as you could and you went to Detroit and you bought your cars and you drove them back. That's how it was done. So my granddad told me the story. I think it was his, his dad or granddad, I can't remember, but they went to Detroit and they had all of the money. I mean, it would have wrecked the whole family. Uh, had they lost this. It was all the money they had. They went to Detroit to buy their cars and, and to bring them back. The brothers, everyone that they could get to come drive these cars back. Well, he had taken his cash and he had folded it around the, his hat. A hat has an inside kind of a sweatband and, and guys used to hide things in there in case they got robbed. And these guys are being from, you know, from a rural homestead in Oklahoma. They weren't super sophisticated and hip and savvy to what was going on in the city. Well, he was heading up there to, to go buy these cars and he thought he'd take a shortcut and he stepped into an alley and he said immediately he got a bad feeling and he looked back and a guy had stepped in and kind of blocked him off and he looked the other way and another guy stepped in front to block him off and he thought, goodness, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to make a decision. So he decided to run as fast as he could towards the smallest guy and that was the guy in front of him. And he ran and the guy took after him and he put his shoulder down and knocked the guy down and those two guys chased him and he said the guy, one of the guys had a pistol and he was beating him on the back of the head with the butt of that pistol, but the fact he had all that cash in his, in his, <laughs> his head that kept him from getting knocked out and injured, and he was able to outrun him uh, and didn't get mugged and didn't lose his money. <laughs> that was, that was quite, quite a funny story, but can you imagine that that was the way things were at the day? So that's it. Um, I, I got so many questions about this, and every time I show the truck, that comes up and up and up, and I thought I would, I would talk about that. 
I'm not saying that you made a bad decision if you bought a diesel. It's not my position to say. Um, I wouldn't ever presume or be so arrogant to think that I could tell you what you should have or what works best for you. You know better than any of us and, and I don't judge anyone. But I ask you to do the same. Uh, I didn't buy a gas because I couldn't get a diesel or I could have had anything I wanted. It was a choice and choices are what I laid out here for you. So something to think about. If you haven't bought one, maybe consider it. Uh, either way, I'm sure you'd be happy with it. That's it. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you all on the next video.